once again there was no ice on the river and I had time. It's a nice calm morning. So I'm getting out for a paddle. The plan today is to start stripping up the second side of the bottom, um, working up from the water line to the chine line and uh, hopefully be able to get all those strips from the water line to the chine on and trim out the chine today. We'll see how far we get. Um, the first couple strips starting at the water line will need to be uh, fitted into the length of the kayak. Up above that, we'll, I'll be able to run a couple over long and then trim them back when I trim to the chine line. One thing you may notice when I try to trim to a line, such as a water line or the chine line or the keel line, is I don't try and nail it the first time I cut. I know enough about how I work to know that I'm just not that accurate. So I try and ease in on it. I'll mark the line where I want to cut, then cut a little proud of it, then try and true that line up. And then once I got everything straight and good, now I try and ease in on exactly where I want the line. By doing that, I can get very accurate to the line. It's not that it's all that critical that I'm accurate to the line, but uh, later on, as we're trying to fit the strips, it does become much more critical that I'm actually accurate to that line so I get a good tight fit. So the idea of easing in on the line is something I do a lot. I, I cut everything a little bit long, give myself some room to screw up, and hopefully by the time I get to where I want, everything's figured out and done right. off at the water line here a few episodes ago we started just stripping on one side we left this unbeveled so the first step here is going to be making sure the bevel here is correct then we'll start adding strips what's going to be different about this one is the strip that comes in on this side has to meet up right here with the existing strip on the other side first let's get to beveling that'll be done with the robo bevel as we get up into the tight quarters of the ends here, the robo bevel doesn't actually fit down tight against the forms, so we can no longer use that up in the tight areas. Once we get past about here, where the strips aren't interfering with the tool resting against the forms, we should be fine. Up here in the end, where the robo bevel doesn't reach, we'll resort to using the side rabbit plane. And we're going to try and hold the, the tool perpendicular to the form above it, trying to shave this down so we get a tight seam right in here, trying to get a tight seam right in there. So we've got the bevel good, now it's going grabbing the first strip for this side. So to achieve the mirror illusion that we're trying to get with the book matching, we need to make sure that the length of these strips ends up at the same place. So longitudinally we want the, any grain on this new strip to match whatever grain's happening on this strip. So that means lengthwise we've got to adjust this so the same location on this strip corresponds to the same location on that strip. So relative to the forms, we see these marks here. Over here we've got similar marks. We want to end up making these marks right here match up longitudinally with those marks there. So bring it down here and now this line right here is right aligned with that line right there relative to the form. This is where we want the strip to end up. So I'm going to make some marks across here. So between this strip and the existing strip so we can re-establish that alignment. Here's the mark that's on that side. Here's some marks, other marks. And so I just made a couple marks across here to be sure we have that aligned. And I'll do it 
several locations down the length of the boat just to make sure it's good. So we'll test the dry fit of this all the way along the length. That looks good. We'll strip back in place. Up here at the bow, we've got this strip coming in from the other side. That's a mirror image of this one right there. And in order to make this fit, obviously we need to make it fit up against that. So we want this snuck right down in between here and there. So the first thing we want to do is just make sure we have an alignment mark up here where it's close to where we're working. So I want those marks to line up right there. Down here at the stern, we've got a little bit easier problem. This strip is just going to run off the end, and so we only need to fit one end. And also looking at this, this right here is where the chine line ended up when we trimmed it down from this side. So the next strip up doesn't need to come down and fit with this one either. If we just look at that line there, the second strip up from the water line ends right in here someplace. So if we make sure the next strip up on this side ends in a similar location, maybe a little farther just to be sure, we know we'll be good. And so we don't need to try and fit up against this center line up there yet. But for this first strip, we'll just run it off the end, and so we only need to fit the bow end. So it's only at the bow end that we need to worry about the fit. So again, we want to end up with these marks lined up. We could cut off anything that's excess here, and we'll end up making a taper. So what I like to do is just give myself some room to screw up. So I'm going to slide this whole thing back an inch or so, then cut it off like there. So the strip's going to end up in here, but we need to take the top off and we've got to put a bevel on it. So this comes out to a bit of a point at this end, it's about that wide, and the taper comes back to about here. So we can mark that taper. Now we'll cut off that excess material. Put on my apron so I have easy access to my apron plane. Now I want to take and just try and get close to that line there. So the strip's going to be something like that. But we have this bevel on here. The strip is at a bit of an angle, and this face there is vertical. Now if I hold this strip, the new strip, at the, approximately the angle it's going to need to be when it's done, and I hold my plane at about vertically, I've created the angle that I'm looking to have this make. So again, with this held at this angle, it's going to meet up against a vertical surface. So if it's going in at this angle and it's going to go against a vertical surface, and I hold my plane vertically, and now main hold keep this strip at the angle I'm looking for, and keep the plane vertical, and now plane away at the side until I get a sharp edge on that. Now we can try to fit. Not bad for a first effort. I see we got a little bit of gunk there holding things apart. I'm going to get in here, clean out some of the glue and whatnot that's in there. So from this angle, you can see it's a little bit tight at the tip or the toe, a little bit loose at the heel here. and. The angle when it's held in here, it's a little bit open at the top. So again, I'm going to hold my plane a little bit open at the top. And I'm going to take my first strokes at the tip. And then work back a little bit. So I've, since it was touching at the tip first, I'm removing more material at the tip, at the toe trying to maintain that same angle and until I get it cutting the full length of the bevel. And we try to fit again. That's quite nice. 
Got a little open space below here. And normally this would be taken care of with the robo bevel. It's so tight up here that the robo bevel doesn't work and even the side rabbit plane has trouble getting all the way into the ends there. I could try and clean that out with a chisel, but a little bit more accurate would be to do what we did along the chine line on the first side when we were trying to make our, our own hand bevel. You know, so freehand that bevel. I'm seeing how wide that gap is on that side. I'll try to match that gap like this. A little tricky doing this in the monitor. I think I bellowed it the wrong way. Nope. That's better. It's not perfect yet. But it's definitely tighter up in there. So it needs a little bit more right out here at the end. On well, here looks good. It's a little bit of overhang of this strip, so it's casting a shadow there, but it's pretty tight. But the thing is, back here, I've got a discrepancy between the mark on the boat and the mark on the new strip. So this whole strip needs to move forward about three quarters of an inch. This needs to go forward about three quarters of an inch, but we've established a good baseline of what this bevel is supposed to be. So we're, we don't need to figure that out, we just need to try and maintain that. Taking our plane, holding it flat against that surface, do a full stroke. Another full stroke, another full stroke. The plane has to be sharp because we want to be cutting the same amount off this whole face from start to finish. And if you've got a dull plane, it'll skip over stuff and this tip will start to bend away and you won't be getting as a uniform thickness off that taper. We want nice uniform shavings. So that was just three passes. Now you look back here, we're at about half an inch. We still have a nice tight fit, but there's only a half inch gap left there. So we'll do the same again, full length. So three passes. So I've taken off the thickness of the shaving three times. That's pretty, pretty good. We're down to about a quarter inch here. Even though I had to take off three quarters of an inch in length, since this is on such a taper, doing six strokes of the plane here moved it half an inch. Whatever the thickness of this shaving is times six was all it took to move this lengthwise by half an inch. So we'll try another three passes. That's almost there. I'm starting to open up a little bit of a gap at the top. It's very thin, but we're going to try for a perfectly tight gap there. See, I'm opening up a slight gap right along that top edge. So again, with my plane, hold it tight against that surface, tight flat against that surface, then open it up just a skosh so it's tighter at the bottom than it is at the top. Take another pass. Lengthwise, we've got like a sixteenth left to go. I can get a little bit tighter there. One more. Uh, there's really no gap up at this seam up there. And we can make these line up there. Looks good and tight along this edge. Opening up a little bit on the bottom there. So I'll start flat and then open it up a little bit. That's pretty darn good. So now if I glue it in place, it should all end up starting out with this grain matching. And if we start out at the right place, the grain on this side should match the grain on that side pretty much exactly. Get the marks lined up and secure it in place.
That looks pretty nice. So we will come through and put some hot milk glue stitches here so we can take the tape off and then we can take the clamps off and if we need to add a little bit more hot melt to glue the strips to the forms we'll do that and then we'll add the next strip. So with the next strip placed stuff for a dry fit, we're going to want to end up making it a line like that. Back here at the stern, I've got my reference lines, and I'm also looking at the second strip up from the water line. The second strip up from the water line from on this side ends right about there. So if I mark it right there, it should be plenty long enough to cover up to the chine cut. And so we'll lop it off right there. And so it fits in there, and we don't need to worry about um, tapering this in. That'll just run free, and there should be plenty of room there. So up here at the bow, we want it to line up like that. But I want to give myself a little room for error, so I'll slide the whole strip back an inch or so. And now it's going to end up being cut off there at a point. That right there, cut it off. Now if I hold this strip up here, it comes to about this point. So bring it back down to the point. And if we mark that, that's how long the taper is going to be. So we can take our high-tech straight edge here. Never have a lack of straight edges when you're strip building. That's the taper we want. We'll now take and get rid of the excess. You know, cedar's easy stuff to cut. There's no reason to bring this over to bandsaw to cut it. You know, this jackknife, I think my grandmother gave this to me when I was 16. It's made a lot of boats. Keep it sharp, it works great. And so I got that trimmed down. And now this one, again, if we think about the angle is going to fit in there, something like that, and we maintain that angle, and again, hold the block plane vertically, we should end up with a shape that just drops right into that space. So I'm not even bothering to go to the line yet. I just want to see if it fits. The more I leave here, the more room for error I have. So, you know, here's a first fit and it seems a little bit high on this edge. It's overhanging a bit. And so that usually indicates that I need to flatten the bevel this way a little bit. So have it flat against the bevel like this, and then I'm going to tip it up. All right, so that's a nice fit right there. Um, we're about an inch and a half in length. How's my, I'm getting a little gap in here. Open this up a little bit, shave away at the bottom. And that's a little bit better. We'll tweak that a little bit more once we get it in there. So again, we've got about an inch and a half or inch and a quarter to go there. So hold it flat against the surface that we've decided was a good tight fit and take full length strokes all the way down the length. This tip's so flexible, we'll probably end up having to take a couple extra passes at the tip. All right, the fit's still good. We've come down to about an inch here. Sometimes this little nib in the end can be hard. I just break it off. I'm going to work on this bevel a little bit on this side to close up that gap there. Tops of good fit. Side here, we still have a little bit of a gap. And back to about here. Got another three quarters of an inch to go.
Right, that's nice and tight top and bottom, so we still have some length adjustment to do. It's starting to open up a little bit along the top here. Here the tip is a little bit low and back here it's a little bit tight. So I'm going to take one pass that doesn't quite reach the tip. One or two passes. Just about there. Got a 3 sixteenths of an inch. I think I'm going to call that good. Now one thing to be aware of, this is the second strip on this side and it ends right there. You can see here's this was the line for trimming to the chine line and then this is the next strip after that. So you have I have a narrow strip here as the second strip up from the water line. So what that indicates is this one's going to end up being narrower here. So when I go to glue this, I'm not going to glue it all the way up along this edge. I'll only glue up to like there just to make sure it's glued in that area right there. Trying to pull this tape as tight as I can to keep that seam as tight as we can get it. So again, counting up from the water line, one, two, three, you can see that the third strip ends somewhere up in here. So we don't need to worry about this third strip over here, one, two, three, hitting here. We can end it before that. So if we end it up in here someplace, we'll be golden. We'll have plenty of room. So as long as we end it someplace past here, up there someplace, we're good. If you remember in the sorting of the strips, I had a circle on this side of the boat. And so I'm making sure all the circles are still out on this side. I didn't do my dry fit yet, so I can see I need some robo beveling. But while I have the strip in hand, let's just go ahead and cut this off to length. So somewhere up in here, down here at the stern, it's in a couple forms forward, so we'll take this and drop it off in there someplace. Up here where the robo bevel's too big to fit in this space, I need to end up doing a little hand beveling on this strip to get a tight fit right there. So once again, we're looking how wide is that gap, and we hold the plane at a similar gap. So this should be the last strip. I've got four strips up this side. There'll be four strips up this side. And I was hoping to get this marked out and trimmed off before the end of the day, but um, I'm running out of time. So we'll get this one strip on and uh, see how it looks. All right, that's it for today. I'm going to leave the tape on and the clamps on, so I'm not going to bother with the hot melt glue. I'll make sure that's turned off. 
and tomorrow we'll come back and uh, trim that off, true it up, and start working across the bottom. So that's all I got today. I was hoping to get the chine done, but uh, we'll leave the truing up for tomorrow. Hopefully uh, we'll get that done, and then I'll start working on closing out the bottom, stripping across from the chine to the Kia line. That'll slow down a little bit just because I'm going to be fitting each end of the strips and so it has to be a little bit more precise. I'm no longer just running strips off the end. If you're enjoying this video, please do all the likes, subscribe jazz, support me on Patreon. I really appreciate it. Helps out a lot. But until the next episode, thanks for watching and happy paddling.